Hello, it's Tay with Mom on the Spectrum, and today we are talking about how to make friends. This is a topic that several of y'all have mentioned in the comments. Making friends can be a challenge for everyone, but especially for people on the spectrum because we have social differences that can make us come across differently than we think we're coming across. So today I've got a few suggestions and guidelines for how to find friends that will support you and understand you. The road's gonna look different for everyone, but I've got a couple of principles that I think will be helpful no matter where you fall on the spectrum. Let's jump in. So today, instead of a stem toy, I have a cup of tea. Sometimes it's just really soothing to hold a cup of tea in your hands. And if you don't live in America, if you're across the pond, you're probably like, oh my gosh, she has a tea bag. She is totally ruining the tea game. I know, I know. But I wanted to share, this is not an ad, but today I'm drinking tea called Cup of Sunshine. And it has something in it called Kana or Kana, K-A-N-N-A. And it's supposed to be very soothing and a really helpful herb for reducing anxiety. It's also caffeine free, which I have to have. Caffeine can make me kind of jittery sometimes. Ooh, what is my tea fortune today? A lot of times on American tea bags, they have like little fortunes or sayings. Are not flowers the stars of the earth? Clara Lucas Balfour. Let me sit and ponder this. Hmm. Today I just wanted to offer some practical tips that can be helpful for people on the spectrum trying to find new friends, which can be so intimidating. So we're gonna keep it really simple today. I'd also love to hear any tips that y'all have for making new friends in the comments. Y'all have so many great suggestions that continually amaze me. And while we're at it, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do that. It's so easy, just click the red button. That's my cat. His name is Beltre. Some of you asked, that's a story for another day. We just call him Belts. He's my youngest child. So subscribe if you haven't already. That helps my videos show up more for people like you and me, and it helps me be able to continue creating videos for y'all. So first of all, I just want to empathize. I know several of y'all have dealt with this frustrating challenge of feeling like you don't have the friend support network that you would like to have. That can be really challenging for us on the spectrum. I find that for myself, my friends are pretty much the friends that I've had forever. I don't make new friends very often. That's really hard for me to do, but I know we're all in different situations. We're all coming from different places and different experiences with friends. Okay, so first things first, when it comes to finding new friends, ah! It's kind of that saying, if you have heard it, about finding a partner, like a romantic partner, be the partner that you want to find. So think about what types of things make a good friend to you. And keep in mind that this definition is probably going to be really different for us, for people in the spectrum versus holistic people or non-autistic people. So it might be, you know, a good friend is someone who's okay with only hanging out once a month. It might be that a good friend is somebody that's okay with only written communication and not verbal communication. That list is going to look completely different for you than it is for the next person. Maybe make that a little journal exercise and just write down a couple of things. It doesn't have to be very many. You can start with three. Several things that to you indicate what a good friend is. Then ask yourself, are you currently doing those things in your life? Even if you don't have people that you consider to be close friends. Are you practicing any of these characteristics with people in your life? Maybe they're colleagues at work, maybe they're family members or loved ones who care about you. Ask yourself if you are able to do some of those things already and practice some of those things in your life right now, even if you don't have somebody that you would normally consider a friend. And I really believe once we start practicing things like that, it helps bring into our lives the things that we're seeking. So if we can become what we're seeking, we will attract more of those things into our lives. If you're new here, I know that sounds a little hippy dippy. If this is not your first video with me, you know that's just kind of my jam, said while drinking tea, while in my room of music and plants and cats. Woo, this video is all over the place. ADHD brain today. Are you sure you don't have caffeine? No caffeine. Okay, so first we have to practice the things that we feel constitute a good friend. That's a practice that will continue to develop and continue to change over the course of our lives. After we get started working on that, here are some practical things we can do to draw these people into our life. Some hither. Y'all, I'm in rare form today. I don't know what's going on. I didn't sleep well last night. Maybe that's what it is. Okay, number one, reconnect with old friends. That might sound a little bit scary, but think back. Do you have any friends that you connected to when you were younger? This might be one of the most sensible approaches, seeing that you already have some type of relationship with them, and a lot has changed in the pandemic. It's kind of a good excuse to go back and say hi to people you haven't talked to in a long time. Hey, how's it going? Are you surviving the last 18 months? What's new 
people in your life. You can reach out on Facebook, email. There's so many digital ways of reaching out where you don't actually have to be super social or verbal or even visual. You can just send a text. So see if there's any friends that stick out to you, any that pop into your mind as I'm talking about this, that you might be able to reach back out to and just say, hey, what's up? I thought I'd check in and see how you were doing after all this time. You might even add something a little personal to make the conversation more genuine. I don't know about you, but in these last 18 months, a lot has changed for one, blank, you know, something that you can add in there to make it a little bit personal. Number two, get involved in a cause that you care about or volunteer somewhere. So for me, obviously I love mental health. I love talking about the brain. I love helping people feel less alone about struggles that they have. What do you love to do? Do you love advocating for kids? Do you like providing meals for people who don't have them? Do you like sorting clothes at a clothes donation place? There's all different types of things you can do. If you are into politics, you can figure out how to start canvassing or helping people with their campaigns, but getting involved in something that you care about is a great way to meet other like-minded people. Kind of related to that is to get involved in a group that has to do with your special interest. So if you're on the spectrum, you probably are aware that you have a special interest that you like to spend a lot of time doing. For me, cats, music, autism, psychology. I have a lot because also I'm ADHD. There's actually really cool sites that can help with this. So in America, we have a site um, that's meetup.com. You can literally type in your special interest and then your zip code where you live and it will pull up related groups. So if you have a super niche interest, it might not pull that up, but you can get in the general vicinity of what your special interest is and find a group that meets to discuss or participate in that activity, which is pretty cool. And a a lot of those groups nowadays are meeting virtually, which I think for some people could make the situation a lot easier, especially for a first time meeting new people. But let's be real, virtual settings can also be intimidating too. So there's pros and cons, but check out sites like that. If you don't have access to meetup.com, you can check out the newspaper. You can check for flyers and advertisements at places that you frequent, like the coffee shop, the grocery store. If you're a parent and you know of other parents at school who have similar interests, you could ask them for recommendations. But being able to spend more time on your special interest with other people who also really appreciate that special interest and are okay with you talking about it ad nauseum, that might be a good place to start. If there's not a group that deals with your special interest, maybe you could start one. You could start a Facebook group and advertise it on Facebook and see if it gets any bites. Fourth idea is join an exercise group or a walking group, just some form of physical activity. There's all kinds of groups like this. Like if you like swimming, you can find a group that meets to swim. If you like biking, there's groups that bike. If you like yoga, there's yoga studios. Physical activity, I think, is almost always a good idea, especially when it's paired with being out in nature, because being active and also being in nature can help with a lot of anxiety that people on the spectrum typically face. So if you're not already physically active, this would be a great opportunity to think about how you could start doing that. And the possibilities are really endless. Facebook groups is probably another good way to find stuff like that. And then lastly, number five, I was going to say, hang out in places that attract the kind of people that you want to be friends with. If you're free spirit kind of like me. Yoga studios are a great place to meet other free spirits. If you are an athlete, if you love sports, maybe you could start going to more sports games. If you're a chef, maybe you could go to a cooking demonstration class. If there's a type of person that you feel safe with, where do they hang out? And you don't have to be creepy lurker in the corner, like staring at everybody. But if you go bring a book to a place that attracts the kind of people that you like, you could just hang out there and get kind of familiar with the environment get kind of familiar with what those people like and do and think because I know that that's kind of helpful for people on the spectrum is to kind of see it in action first before we understand how to interact with it. Find a place you can go to where you feel like the people who visit there are safe to interact with. And you can slowly start learning their customs and develop the courage and tools that you need in order to interact with them. And then lastly, I just wanted to wrap up with a couple of thoughts. Make sure that you're interacting in a way that feels good to you. So if you don't like face-to-face -face conversations, something that I do, like I'll talk to my friends when I see them in person, but a lot of times a majority of the conversations that I have with my friends are written. I love texting my friends. I love emailing my friends and that format is a lot easier for me. So if you're in a place where you meet someone, but you don't really feel comfortable talking a whole lot with them, 
in person, see if you can get their phone number or their email address and maybe send a follow up after you spend time with them, just letting them know that you had a good time. Which leads me to my next little wrap up point. It's okay to talk through what you're thinking in your head in terms of relating to the other person. If you're meeting someone new, feel free to share things like these types of situations are kind of challenging for me, but I'm enjoying talking with you. Something as simple as that, just to let them know, like, you know, sometimes we can kind of appear socially awkward. So if we give them a little heads up, like I'm not really used to this kind of thing, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm enjoying my time here. It's really nice to meet you. I think it can be really helpful to kind of calm our anxiety when we acknowledge how we're actually feeling and give the other person a little bit of a clue as to what we're experiencing as well. And then lastly, just wanted to remind you that maintaining friendships isn't always easy and it has a lot of ups and downs. So if you meet a new friend, developing that friendship, it isn't just going to be this linear increase in terms of your closeness with this person. All relationships have unpredictable ebbs and flows and just because it's not always sunshine and rainbows and butterflies, it doesn't mean that it's a failed relationship or friendship. It just means that life is hard and it's especially hard <laughs> these last 18 months, 18 going on 4,036 months. Life is hard and it's going to take practice to learn how to interact with other people in a way that makes them feel seen and valued. And as you spend time learning how to do those things, it will help the people that you're building friendships with know how to in turn do that for you. Like I said, it's a process. Be patient with yourself. Be kind with yourself. It's normal to say silly things that you didn't mean to say or interact in a way that feels a little bit awkward. All of those things are totally normal. Just give yourself time to figure out a rhythm and try to laugh off the things that don't go the way that you want them to go. There's always a community here for you in the comments. There's so many cool people on this channel and shout out to Megan. Hello, Megan. I'm so excited. Megan helped me land an interview with a company. I met her through this channel on my video about the interview process for people on the spectrum. And y'all are just so cool. I just love interacting with y'all. So if you want to start here, just, you know, reply to someone whose comment you resonated with. So much of what I've seen here on this channel has just been positive and supportive. And so I really feel like like for many of you, this could be a safe place to start interacting with other people. And thank you so much for the response to the last video about medication and autism. Do you know what the number one response to that video has been? I love being autistic and I'm becoming more okay with my quirks every day. I love that. And some of you are on medication and have talked about it in the comments and I love that you're being vulnerable and brave and sharing your struggles. I just love that the overwhelming sense that I'm getting from the comments is like, I like who I am and I'm not trying to change that. That's so cool. It made me so happy to see those comments. This this video was in response to a couple of people asking me about friendships on the spectrum. Just giving you a little insight into my own life. I feel like I do have a lot of friends, but I don't really feel like I need to hang out with my friends very often. I would say that I interact with my friends through text or sharing funny memes. I love sharing GIFs with people. I say GIF instead of GIF. I don't want to hear it. It's GIF. But in terms of getting together with friends, I don't do that very often. I feel like all of a sudden I'll just feel like totally out of whack and I'll be like, why do I feel so off and like I have no friends and then I'll realize that it's because I haven't spent any time in person with them. So at that point, you know, I have some really easygoing friends. One of my super easygoing friends, David, he's so easy to invite over to dinner. We just pick up fast food and he hangs out with me and my husband and our kids and we just eat like pizza and drink wine and he goes home pretty early because he likes to sleep. So he's a pretty cool friend to have. <laughs> so you'll find people that fit your vibe and you'll kind of learn how to interact with them. But yeah, I don't, I don't really hang out in person very often with my friends, but I do make a point of communicating with them regularly. I really like encouraging other people. So I spend time letting them know, you know, that I'm thinking about them or that I'm proud of them for, you know, whatever they're managing at the moment. And those are ways that I feel like I can connect to them without necessarily like talking about things that people normally talk about, if that makes sense. You'll start to recognize your own strengths when it comes to maintaining friendships and just play those up. Like I said, one of mine's encouragement. I love, love encouraging my friends. I love making them laugh and sending them ridiculous things. So play up your strengths. Just know that the way that we carry out friendships might look totally different than how other people in the world do it. And I think that's really great. Anyways, cheers to neuro diversity. Please like this video if it was helpful to you. Hey, here's an idea. Share it with a person that is your friend or somebody that you would like to become friends with. I'm planning on making a video short pretty soon on concrete actions you can take in the midst of a panic attack. I know that those can happen kind of regularly sometimes for people on the spectrum. At least many of us are familiar with panic attacks. I don't know how this is possible. Some people don't know what a panic attack is or feels like. If that's you, that's okay. I'm not trying to ostracize you. I just feel like a lot of people watching might 
have an idea about what a panic attack feels like. That'll be coming up soon, but I'm also preparing for my interview next week, so send good vibes for that. I do want to let you know that I feel like many of you are becoming my friends just through our interactions that we're having on the channel, so if you feel alone, just know that I do think about y'all during the day. So, hello friends! Thanks for watching. Bye friends. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.